Okay, welcome back, uh, Dr. Graves again uh, with CSUN, and this is part two of the Geography 102 Grizzly Lab. Where we left off, we had just rasterized the trout range vector map, turned it into a raster map, and now what we're going to do is to reclassify the data in our rasterized trout map into essentially two categories. Uh, we're going to take categories 1 through 12 and make them all worth essentially three points because there are trout there. And then in the area that has uh, no trout, we will give that essentially one point or a value of one. Here's how you reclassify data. Open the ARC toolbox once again and we can uh, close the conversion tools down and we can expand the spatial analyst tool. From the spatial analyst tools, expand the reclass toolkit and double click on the reclassify tool itself. the reclassify tool dialog window will open. Our input raster will be the California trout underscore polygon to raster layer, this one, and the reclass field that we're going to reclass um, could be values or it could be species. Either one is fine but we must know that the last value where it says none needs to be reclassified into the value of one. And I just typed the one in there. The rest of these are being reclassified to three. So type in a three on each occasion, not a three. three, 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 and so on until all of the values have been reclassified. Uh, your file name should be here and once again that's saving to your um, VSL drive. Oh, and I should point out down here at the bottom that no data this row can be left as no data. And that's pretty much it. All you have to do now is to click OK and wait a moment while the reclassify tool runs. Now you'll notice uh, that you have a reclassify. Hopefully you got a green check mark that made it run. Now you have only two classes on your map. Those areas with a 1 over here have a, va a value of one for no trout and all of the areas with trouts have now been reclassified to um, at least on my screen this obnoxious green color uh, for trout. You can always double click on that color and change it to something else if you think that trout should be blue for example or maybe you like a different color. So pink is good, more trout, um, and uh, one is not so good for bears because there is no trout. It's not saying that bears couldn't survive without trout. It's just that the habitat is much better if there are trout. Uh, we could have thrown salmon or done some other things in there as well. Okay, so uh, now I believe you have to answer a question. So go ahead and do that. I'm going to pause for a moment. Okay, so now we're back at the part uh, where we're going to check for another element of the grizzly bear habitat. I'm going to turn off the polygon raster, the first thing, and we'll, we'll keep this uh, trout habitat open. Next, um, we're going to convert this wilderness area vector. 
here, which is just huge parks where, or recreational areas, or even military bases, those sorts of things that might be good places for grizzly bear habitat. Um, we have some very large areas, and uh, I've essentially looked up for you the size of the areas that one uh, a grizzly bear needs um, or to live in in order to to survive well so once again we're going to open the uh, raster toolbox here and we've got to close down the spatial analyst one or just go up here and uh, expand the conversion tools and we're going to use the polygon to raster once again this time um, use the input feature of wilderness areas we're going to convert that vector into a raster map and the value field in this instance will be area because we want to classify those um, parks by the number of acres or square miles uh, that grizzly bears have to roam about. Uh, we're going to set our environments just as we did before. Uh, the processing extent will be the same as California counties and the raster analysis mask will be the same as California counties as well. Click OK, click OK again, and wait a moment while the raster, the raster tool works. And it worked. I can turn off my wilderness vector map. And what I have on uh, the screen now is the vectorized version of this. Oddly enough, the highest values uh, over here are in white. And that sort of doesn't help us. So uh, double click over here on this color ramp. Uh, black to white where the smallest parks are black and the largest parks or wilderness areas are white. If I double click it will give us some options for a color ramp better suited for what we want to do and maybe we will click uh, red to green and see how that looks where the the red um, are smaller parks uh, less useful I should say wilderness areas and the green are very vast uh, wilderness areas, places where uh, grizzly bears would have an enormous amount of space to roam about. Uh, at this point, you have to a answer a question or two. Um, what you'll do is to make sure that the California counties map, you know, turn it on for a moment. There's a question about uh, a very large um, wilderness area that's in Inyo County. So remember where Inyo County is, turn off your California counties layer, and turn on your wilderness area vector map. And if you click in this area, a pop-up window will appear and you will answer a question. I will repeat it with the wrong location here. Uh, this is Yosemite National Park. Um, I clicked on that polygon there, and Yosemite National Park is the administrative area. You will click over here and answer a question. OK, after you've answered the question, um, you may turn off the wilderness area vector layer. and what we need to do now is to reclassify this very complex map uh, before you, this rasterized version of uh, the wilderness areas into something that is more useful for our suitability analysis. So what are we going to do? Um, we're going to reclassify this into essentially four zones and those areas wilderness areas that are really large will get a score of four because they are the best uh, wilderness areas and the very smallest of these wilderness areas will get a score of only one. 
So how do we do that? Once again, uh, we can uh, close up the conversion tool window. We can come down into the spatial analysis tools, uh, expand that window uh, from the reclass options, choose reclassify, double click to open the reclassify window. So these steps get uh, slightly more complicated, so pay close attention here. The input raster will be our new wilderness raster map. So that is on the top. And we're going to reclass the value field. And there's a simpler way, the simple way of doing this is to click on the classify button and we're going to change the number of classes from nine down to four. Now the complex part is knowing which part should go in what category and I've looked that up for you and what we've found is that that uh, parks that are between or greater than 750 square miles are really good. Those between 500 and 750 square miles are okay. And between 250 square miles and 500 square miles are barely uh, adequate for a grizzly bear habitat. And any sm space smaller than 250 square miles is inadequate, and each of those will have a value associated with the quality of that habitat size. So what are we going to do? Well, click here in the Break Values window, click once on this first value, and type in the following numbers. It's 650 million, 650, four, five, six. So that's seven zeros. Go down to the next one and you will type in uh, one billion three hundred million squ uh, square meters. One, three, and then seven zeros. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. I didn't do that correctly. There, now it has seven zeros. And notice that the lines are now, the lines on the histogram have changed. The third classification is two billion square meters. That's nine zeros. And then anything above that, it will be uh, roughly above 750 square miles, and that is the most ideal grizzly habitat. So I'm going to click OK. And now these data values, the smallest value here, those are the smallest uh, wilderness areas. They get a value of 1. Perhaps a grizzly bear could survive, but not well. Um, but these larger wilderness areas get higher scores. We will leave no data as no data. I don't believe we need to re-establish uh, the environments because we've already done that once. Click OK and let the reclassification tool run. Okay, so the reclassification tool has run. Uh, there is an odd glitch uh, that keeps showing up, at least in my computer, uh, where there is a value of 127 on one tiny pixel somewhere in the middle of the San Joaquin Valley. That can be ignored. Uh, you may want to double click on reclass uh, this map layer and maybe you want to change the symbology to something that is a graduated uh, layer so that the darker colors are uh, represent better bear habitat and that the lighter areas uh, represent or at least um, a different color represents less ideal bear habitat. I'm going to click on this 127 once and click remove because I don't need it. You can leave it there but you'll just need to ignore it. I'm going to click apply and now I have a bear habitat 
a map where the darkest colors in the color scheme I've chosen are green and that these reddish colors um, represent poorer bear habitat. At this point, uh, we're going to stop and um, that's the end of part two.